Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the pod. As always, hope you're doing well. Happy to be here. Barely on my end. YouTube, I'm sorry. It looks like I just broke up with my high school boyfriend for the 10th time this semester. I have not. I am having a terrible allergic reaction in my eyes. It's been this way for 10 days, but I think we might be on the come up. Good. We're on the mend. I saw a lovely virtual doctor that was covered by Alberta Health Services. If you're curious about that, um, message me and I will give you the deets. But um, yes, apologies for my <laughs> high school drama look. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been crying myself to sleep every day. For I'm, I've been yeah. in the bathroom at the school dance crying, which is, there's always one, right? There's always one. There's always one. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't me in high school, so it's me now. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so a um, bit of a different episode. This is going, we're actually just going to talk about ourselves for the whole episode, so if you don't like do, us. We do anyways, but I promise you it'll still be helpful for you to maybe get some inspiration yeah. of, what, of what we're up to these days. Uh, but first, without without uh, delay, do you have a win for the week, Jill? Um, what am I up to? The theme of the podcast. What's my win? Um... <laughs> I feel like I haven't been up to that much, but I also eat the life of us is like, did I do anything? Yeah, I've been doing lots of things. Um, wow, apparently nothing exciting. You got a win? <laughs> As I'm um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a, I have a, actually have a fitness win. I know I've said the last couple episodes that I, my fitness just really isn't where I would like it to be, given that I'm in almost at the end of cyclocross season. Um, typically, I would like my top end, um, you know, high heart rate, high output fitness to be there, but it just hasn't been. Um, but um, cyclocross is a sport that you usually end up um, really fit at the end of the year because it's just high intensity for like 45 minutes. Um, and I actually, I was in a race, two races this weekend and the race on Sunday was provincials. And so you race, you can race in your age group. So you can race people who are the same age as you, not, um, 17 year olds, which is typically how it goes with biking. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, against people who are my own age, I came fourth. Mm -hmm. So I was really stoked about that because I actually felt like I rode, really well all my skills were there yeah maybe i suffered um but i also had a pretty good time so um i was like just like cool i was like actually stoked about the result even though the results they don't really matter but you know what when you're a competitive person um they do i was gonna say they do you, matter they do matter ask, to me it always matters a little <laughs> we always like to do things well i am not somebody who can just say like oh i'm just happy to be here that's just not this is not who i am to I'm my happy, core yeah i'm happy to be here and to be good at what i'm here for <laughs> so, yeah it's it's a it's a curse almost a blessing and a curse to be somebody who is a natural athlete Mm -hmm. uh, because we tend to be pretty good at most things that we try, which is, if you remember back when I was doing like a lot of Olympic lifting, that was something that I found very frustrating is that because it is such a technical sport, um, yes, I was strong and I was getting it, but it takes so long to actually be good at Olympic lifting that it was very frustrating because you're stuck at like a certain number for so long um just because your technique can't handle a higher weight and then if you stop doing it then you go back to just like immediately being terrible at olympic lifting um which is really hard on the ego and i you know what's funny is i don't think a lot of people are like cool with admitting that their ego is taking a hit um and i think that comes with some athletic maturity as being like i i 
I'm really having a hard time sucking at this right now um, and sticking with it. And I think the more we can admit that, the easier it gets to be terrible at things that we're working on. So, yeah. And not just stop doing that. Anyways, <laughs> look at me go. I'm growing. We love that. Um, I can't believe I almost forgot. I have a couple. Okay, well, first things first. This will segue into my wins. Uh, I did have a client ask, how my Amazon pillows are because I told mm. God that I ordered yes, them. Please give us an update. And failed to give any update. Um, but it's probably good I'm giving it now because I think I've had them around for about a month now. Um, and like, I like them. I like them for the price point they were. It was $30 for two pillows. Okay. Um, I already have like two memory foam pillows. So I needed... Like I need a mix of like my memory foam pillows are like rock hard, but then I also like a fluffy pillow to like squish or like layer, you know? Mm -hmm. So they serve that purpose, but they're also not pancakes because I can't handle fluffy pillows that are just like two inches thick and literal pancakes. And like, it's been a month and they're still like big and fluffy. They haven't just like instantly died. So, and I think $30, $30 for two pillows is a great price because one pillow at ikea the only pillow i liked at ikea was 108 dollars so um yeah if you well, and i think and we talked about this like pillows are a scam really yeah. buying pillows is a scam because you're probably going to end up with like five or six pillows shoved away or on your spare bed if you have one um you know just as cast offs um, well, that's good. I'm glad that you're so, relatively satisfied with your pillows, good. investment. For $30, I have zero complaints. Um, my actual wins are on the social anxiety side of things, which I feel like I haven't talked about in a while because Jess knows it's not really a big thing for me anymore, but it was at one point. I think you were around for my like peak of my social anxiety yeah. of like crying when I had to like do anything around people I didn't know it was actually not that fun I'm not gonna lie to anyone being like debilitatingly anxious anytime you have to like step into any form of unknown not that fun um and you were around for like the peak of my social yeah. anxiety and I feel like that comes with like finding your place and your confidence in life too um therapy also <laughs> helped but in the past couple of days, I had a couple of, like big wins that like a year ago or two year ago, Jill would have been like, we're not doing that. Uh, my friend Ethan, and he's been on the podcast, he launched his book this past weekend. So it would have been a couple of weeks ago now, but like October 1st was his official book launch. Um, and I, I brought a friend with me and one of my clients actually wanted to come too. So that was cool to bring her into like, a space with my people um but a year ago me two years ago me would have been like i'm not going to that because my brain was like you don't really have a place there and you shouldn't be there and that was still the dialogue my brain was telling me um and jess knows that like ethan's one of my good friends so i don't know why my brain decided to be like yeah, you get to be there <laughs> also just sad that like i wasn't invited to yeah. the book launch, even though we've had Ethan on the pod twice and we talked about his book on the pod. Well, so Ethan, if you're listening, um, you know my email. <laughs> it was out there. I should have sent you the invite. I just assumed you would have seen it on social media and were did like, not, did well, not see it. Time because there'll be more books mm -hmm. from him, I'm sure. So next time I will make sure to send you a direct. I assumed you saw it and were like, Yeah, I don't want to go to that, which is also fine. No, but I did not I, see it at all. I didn't see it till after, which is fine. So I so, wasn't like sitting over here being like, Gee, I wish I was invited. Um, <laughs> I didn't see it till after. So that's yeah, fine. So I promise. But we went, I had to cry before I went because my brain was still just like, you shouldn't be there but i was like shut up brain i'm going and a year ago me would have been like that's it i'm not going so i went and had a couple of people with me and i also learned to think about my social anxiety while i was there that i can like kind of this is going to sound pretty woo woo but i can like i've been leaning into my social anxiety in the way of like picking up on other people's energies in the term of like who's a safe person who's not mm -hmm. like if i did someone in this room 
who would be the person I went to. And obviously I had a client and a friend there, um, but being able to like acknowledge the energies that are in the room is a cool thing I'm trying to get better at of being like, if I needed someone, they're safe, they're not safe. And kind of like figuring that out for myself. Um, so that was a success and I didn't run away or cry. So that's cool. And then the next night I went for dinner with one of my clients, uh, well, one of my old clients. I told her, I was like, I mean this in the most loving way, but you've graduated into the friend category. <laughs> so she worked with me for a few months. She's from Calgary. We went for dinner because she's in town for work this week. Um, and it's it was cool. I did tell her, I'm like, I, I will be your friend, but I also hope you can respect that if you need a nutrition coach in the future, it will no longer be me because um, I have had that friend trainer dynamic. Mm -hmm in the ass pretty hard in the past and it's not often I share as much of my life with my clients as they want to know not yeah there and I respect that but she was one of those people that I was like we would be friends in real life and then I was like wait we can be friends in real life so it's a weird it's a weird boundary um I I do have a few clients who are also friends um i also have clients that like i've never even met in person really um it's it's interesting who you vibe with and i feel like sometimes you just attract the people that are like just like you um and yeah it can be like even you know i've i've coat like my mom is one of my clients and that's like a interesting boundary even though she she does pay full price for everything because I'm like, if I give you a deal or if it's free, it's not accountability, no. right? Like that doesn't work very well. But I want to go back a little bit and just say that I don't think recognizing the people that put off bad vibes is like a woo-woo thing. I think that is a really great quality to have and just to be like, you are not a safe person to me and I will be polite and, you know, civil in, in a public setting, but know that like, I'm not sticking around for much more than small talk. Should we end up in that situation? And I think that's really important because you need to protect your, your energy, which does sound a little woo woo, but I don't, I don't think it is. I think that we give, too much energy to those unsafe people um and i think you know as as coaches and, and things like that we i feel like we've both gone through periods where we've got where we've had those like soul sucking clients for lack of a better term and i think the more of yourself you put out into your marketing your programming your social media um, even, you know, like podcasting, I guess this is a form of social media is you attract the people who are your people, mm -hmm. right? I was just talking to my business coach yesterday about, um, how I just have like the greatest clients right now. And I've had clients who, um, they'll go through like, um, like a medical sort of thing where they do really need to take three or four weeks away and i can just say yeah no problem don't worry about paying me like we'll just pick up when you're ready or um i had a client take off on vacation after their big race and i was like don't worry about like paying i'll just prorate you until for when you come back and even though like yes that's a privilege but to be able to do that but that's also like my right as a business owner to be like um i get to decide and like if it was somebody who was like every other month like i need a break i need a break obviously that would be a little bit different but um it's kind of cool when you can just be like yeah no problem and yeah. if you need me to be there for you during this time like please reach out because as i was also telling my business mentorship people we are often the first or only people to know about certain medical things that happen. Often we are the very first to know about pregnancies or losses in that department, or even sometimes the only people outside of immediate family to know. And that is a huge undertaking um, 
for a coach. Not problematic, just something to be aware of that um, we often have so many secrets. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Or surprises, I should say. Secrets are bad things when you talk when we we're talking oh. about safe, safe things. Uh, for kids, anyways, it's the new thing is you um safe adults don't have secrets, they have surprises. Oh. Um I think secrets are a bad thing. I think it comes with a trust thing and I think it comes with a like confidentiality thing. But I do mm -hmm. I get what you're saying, even with clients catching those vibes is important. But in real life it's been like a game changer for me to be like Yeah. I needed something right now. Who would be my go-to person in this room, even if well, I don't right know. now me? Because I'm yeah. right. But even if I don't know them, and it was just cool to sit in that room on Sunday and be like, "You're cool. You're cool. No, thank you. You're cool." And that's not mm -hmm. like that. I don't know if you're a bad person. I don't know anything about you, but the energy you give off is not like, "Oh, come to me if you need something." Um, and well, I will. Say one, I think it's also like a graduating thing from like people pleasing and having this thing of like everyone needs to like me. Um, and you're like, you know what? It's okay if we don't vibe because and I also think, I'm vibing over here. I also think people tell us everything we need to know. It's whether we mm -hmm. pay attention to it or not. And if you're totally. sitting there, how do you pick up on that energy? You can do it too. You're probably just not paying attention to it. People mm -hmm. tell you, my yeah. best friend Ash gets so annoyed with me because she's like, how do you know all these things about me? And how do you like pick up on all these things about people? And I'm like, because people tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. We're not complicated. We just don't pay attention. It's true. Uh, it's true. I will say too, and then we can get into the pod. I had a call this morning with um, a company for a potential new client app. If you're my client listening, nobody panic because I know I just kind of got everyone settled in our current app i don't know if it's going to be the right fit for me but i do need to make some changes with the amount of clients i have and the app i'm using so we'll see um but i will share this with you because it gave me a little confidence boost um and adam if you're listening thanks for actually paying attention to what i'm up to on social media i have calls with like companies or businesses sometimes and they have no idea of what I'm up to ever. So I appreciate someone who like takes time to learn before they try to sell me a product. <laughs> That's a treat. Um, but he said that he thinks our podcast is really cool. And that he was like, he was like, I know it's not generating income right now. Um, but he was like, I think podcasts are one of the most underrated marketing things for coaches to use because it, he was like, we know that personality sells these days and you mm -hmm. want to get to know the people you're hiring for whatever before you actually give the money and he was like i think your podcast is generating more revenue and more like totally than you think and that was just nice to hear from somebody in that professional space i agree thank you adam happy yeah. you're here and a dude listening to our podcast oh I did say lovely. spread the good I word he was like, I haven't listened to it yet, but he's like, it's on my radar. It's in my like play next list. So maybe we'll catch this episode. And I feel like um, he, he's, he's absolutely right. It doesn't cost us a dime to make. And it is a free resource for anybody who's considering coaching with us. We have well over 100 episodes now on a variety of topics. So if you were ever curious how we felt about I don't know, let's say intermittent fasting, or like we just did one on like the PCOS diet. If you were considering working with one of us and you wanted to make sure we were good vibes, you could probably listen to a couple episodes on a couple topics you were curious about and you could figure it out real fast before mm -hmm. you even spent a dime. It's also good for us to be able to be like, we have continuing questions happening all the time. Like, like Jess, what's intuitive eating? What's the nutrition program you coach? I have an episode all about it. And you can listen to it before we even have a consult call about coaching. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really, I think we, and, and I know a lot of podcasts don't make it past whatever. And I think, I think things are gonna start happening because of the podcast for, yeah. for both of us, because we have been at it for a long time and i know that the algorithms with spotify and apple pods and stuff they favor um consistency consistent thank you so he was i just thought i'd share that with you that he 
Aww. gave us a little like keep going pat on the back. And it was just a nice change of like, if you're gonna sell me a product, know what I do with my life. And he yeah. obviously had questions for me still, which is fine. But he at least like he was like, I have your TikTok pulled up, I have your podcast pulled up. And I was like, holy shit, somebody who wow. actually looks into the person they're trying to like onboard. What a concept. So right. Somebody who's taking some time and investing. Yeah. It was refreshing because I did a call a couple of weeks ago and the lady was like, straight up was like, oh, like, are you on social media? And she hadn't even talked to me about the product she was trying to sell oh, me yet. And I was like, I remember out. we I'm talked out. about that. Like, you don't even know that I'm on yeah. social media. I'm out. So <laughs> are you on social media? And then okay. she so step one, and it'll cost you a thousand dollars. Get an Instagram account. Take give me money yeah. um yeah that's that's wild um and, wild like, that people think that you're just gonna hand over a whole bunch of money for advice well, like and that. it was like it was just funny because she like knew clearly nothing about me what i was up to the social media i create the content yeah. i create nothing and then i watched her face and that's not to say like i have so many followers but i've worked hard to grow following and she pulled up my tiktok and was like oh and I was like, yeah, I'm not buying your product. You didn't even take the two seconds to punch my username into any social media platform. So wow. Long yeah. and short, as my favorite podcast always says, let's jump right into it 20 minutes later. Um, we wanted to talk to you guys and just chat about what we're kind of up to in our lives, our non-negotiables, our fitness routines, our nutrition that kind of stuff. Cause I know with seasons changing, it can feel a little bit overwhelming to be like, what do I do now? Yeah. Um, and we talked a little bit lately in the last couple of episodes about all or nothing mindset. And, um, I, I looked back and it's been a while since we talked about our non-negotiables. And so maybe those have changed. Um, I should probably go back and listen to that episode myself or, go back in my notes and see if I made any about that. Um, one thing that I have been doing lately, and this is a straight, um, this is straight up from Jill, is um, so previously what I would do, or probably for the last whatever years, is I would have like, um, I would have my greens in the morning and then I would just go like right to coffee, probably have two coffees and then breakfast like later. Um, and I was like, cause then, but then I'm already at like two coffees are done. I don't really love having a third, but sometimes I will, but then it's like, you know, it's just like, it's just a lot of, a lot of caffeine and probably not great for my stomach. So mm -hmm. what I started doing is I do my greens. That's a non-negotiable. And then right after my greens is I just have like a banana and then I have a cup of coffee and I really like hot coffee. Do not give me lukewarm coffee unless it's supposed to be cold. Um, and I am, iced or hot, there's no in between. Yeah, I am a hot coffee girl. So what I started doing is I started just putting my first coffee in like a travel mug, like a Yeti product drop. Yetis, keep your coffee hot. Um, because I'll get doing something and then my kid will want breakfast. So I'll like end up with cold coffee. So I can have that going for what an hour even if i don't end up drinking it all right away um and then i have actual breakfast and then i get going on the water because i've had water with my green so it's not like i'm missing it and then i won't have my second cup until like 10 10 30 sometimes even 11 which is great because that's probably when my cortisol from breakfast is starting to like dip a little bit you need a little bit of an up and it's been going like really well i don't find that i'm like as reliant on the coffee like it's just something i enjoy um i'm drinking more water um i didn't really have digestion issues before but i definitely don't now um and yeah it's just been really nice so having that like the space between the two coffees and then like making sure that i eat something right away even if it's just a banana is such a game changer from having from waiting until like eight or like 8 30 to have like proper breakfast yeah and i think coffee for a lot of people is a habit more than a need like don't get me wrong i love coffee <laughs> um it will always be in my life but 
if you feel like you need coffee in the morning, we have a little bit of an issue, whether it's with sleep or nutrition mm-hmm. or lack of vitamins or whatever it may be. If you're like, I can't function at all with a, without coffee, we have something to dive into there. And I think giving yourself a little more time in the morning to even process like, do I need three cups of coffee or is that just my habit and that's my routine? Do I need it for energy? Maybe you need one cup, maybe you enjoy one or two cups, but maybe we have more of that habit of like drinking half a pot just because we do. Um, Coffee is also an appetite suppressant. So if we're chugging back two, three, four cups of coffee first thing in the morning, of course you're not hungry for breakfast. You're probably not even hungry for lunch. Um, Mm -hmm. So if we can cut that back and get something in there, which is cool, and that's actually something I talked about in Happy Hormones this past week too, was getting away from coffee on an empty stomach. But I don't care how you do that. It doesn't have to be eggs and egg whites and turkey bacon. It can be, mine's usually a bagel. It can be a piece of, just get like, put something in there. And I'm glad Mm -hmm. you're noticing the like, benefits from it too which is and I think like you said like the coffee ends up being more of a habit except that we tell ourselves that we need it right Mm -hmm. and I think that that probably happens to a lot of parents It's it's a slippery slope right because you're a lot of days we are in survival mode and I think that that's not necessarily, it's not like a terrible thing. It's just, it is what it is. It's the season of life that we're in with little kids and you may not have slept well, but you're like, oh, I'm just gonna like coffee my way through the day. But have we considered getting a little bit of energy from food and staying hydrated so that our body isn't just like shriveling away? Like, not that that would actually happen, but you know, hydration and nutrition do go a long way. And I think, there's a culture around moms and coffee. Um, and and it's not a it's not a bad thing. It's just can we recognize that our energy comes from other places? And we're not getting really energy from coffee. We're just getting a stimulant. And that's what I was gonna say. And even if if you've been drinking coffee for as long as I have, I've been I'm 26, I've been drinking coffee for 10 years already. <laughs> Should I have been? Probably not, but such is life. Um you're probably used to your caffeine intake in the morning anyway. So it's probably not actually doing anything for you. It's just a habit. And yeah, I was going to say coffee gives us energy, but so does food. And we tend to forget about that. Yeah, my morning routine has been the same for a hot minute and it probably won't change anytime soon. I am going to cycle myself off of creatine just for a quick minute. You don't have to if you're taking like a regular, because I know someone's going to be like, oh my God, do I need to stop my creatine? No, if you're taking your standard five grams a day, you're mm-hmm. fine. I personally like to cycle off most of my supplements at some point for a couple of weeks or a month um, just to give my body a little bit of a break. And you're probably going to find it gives, I tell my clients this all the time, it gives you a chance to check in. Is this supp- supplement actually making a difference for me? Can I actually feel a difference when I'm not taking it? Am I just taking it for fun? That's a big thing with probiotics is taking that break and assessing if it's actually doing anything or not. Um, I also just think like we weren't born taking 18 billion supplements, so our body can function without them. And I think it needs a little bit of a break sometimes, but you're most likely not going to die if you never take a break from creatine. So my morning routine is my greens creatine. I do, I use this new supplement, but the company kind of did me dirty. So I don't really want to talk about it. So, which is a bummer. <laughs> okay. I actually, they sent me a supplement for like brain health and focus and like ADHD things. And it's really helpful, except, and this is on the back end of doing social media stuff. I was supposed to get a commission and they decided to not. Like I got an email with a referral and it said 0% commission, which is not what we agreed on. And then when I emailed them to reach out about it, they didn't reply to me. So now I'm like, well, I like your supplement, but I don't want to talk about it because you're kind of a dick. So those will stay the same. Creatine will come out for a little bit. Um, But greens, same thing as you, helps me get my water in in the morning. And then I just have to chug. I I didn't say that I do take creatine every day in my greens as well as I I added in some glutamine um, just because uh, I don't know if I talked about it on the pod maybe a month ago I was feeling very like 
energy like run down and I just wanted a little bit more gut health support just so I could be actually be absorbing mm -hmm. energy nutrition um and it hasn't I would I would say I feel a little bit better it so I don't know if it was that or if it was just actually some recovery time and some more mindfulness around um working out and bedtime routines and things like that but whatever that's neither here nor there um yeah what else i do um right now we are in a non-negotiable phase of a dog walk slash toddler bike ride nice. at least once a day most of the time it's like three or four times a day so we're getting our steps in we're getting that purposeful walking in and if it doesn't happen which it's happened for a while i usually work during nap time you guys know that so if i'm not getting enough steps in i will walk on my treadmill with my treadmill desk and work while i walk you see me pod as i walk so um i think having an option like a treadmill desk is really key for people who sit a lot i like that um you just have to know that you're not going to walk at like your I'm going for a walk pace. It's more, it's actually more toddler pace for you parents up there. It's hard to yeah. walk at your actual pace and work at the same time. And I think both of us have had that non-negotiable of movement every day in some way. And that's something I pass on. And I know you do too, to your client. Mm -hmm. A lot is movement doesn't have to be the hardest and most intense thing you do all the time. If we're looking to build those routines, just carving out the time to move in some way is the first step and then once we have that down we can change what that movement looks like within that time or add more time or whatever um so yeah i mean it helps definitely we both kind of have that loophole of owning dogs where that will drive us actually insane if they mm -hmm. don't exercise they need um but you should be doing it for you as well i always joke that nola takes me on a walk not the other way around like she's probably like oh, oh same mom on a walk again <laughs> so uh yeah moving in some way is always there in the winter i do tend to find other ways to move and you and i actually talked about this in our dms the other day um oh yeah of uh, i'm probably going to be adding some yoga into my routine in the winter just because i know my movement other than like ski weekends, my movement's gonna come down as it gets colder, whether I want it to or not. I will still walk my dog because I have a dog that does not care if it's cold out, um, but I care if it's cold out. So when it's really cold, it's probably not gonna be hour long walks all at once. It might be some 20 minute walks broken up. And I just think yoga is a nice way to get me out of the house, give me something to do move my body, but it's not adding intensity because with the training mm -hmm. I'm doing right now, I don't need more intensity. I just need to make sure I'm still keeping things moving. So hot yoga will probably come in once a week. There's a studio I can walk to or drive if needed, if it's negative 4,000 out. Um, so I'm excited to put some new movement in and that always helps me with season changes too, like having something new to look forward to. Yeah um i haven't looked any further into it but same same as the weather starts to change and i'm doing a little bit less outside i also um i've been doing a lot of pause and tempo work just trying to rebuild my strength as you know that is the way to build pure strength in the gym for the most part uh, unless you're going to be doing really heavy stuff, but I haven't really been able to progress to being super heavy because I only have so much available at home and um, I do have like a forearm kind of injury right now. So that's a little bit limiting. So I've been working a lot in doing pauses and tempos in my own gym, which is very, very boring work. Very I'm low. I'm coming out of my pause and tempo <laughs> program and Ethan does my programming and I literally can't wait. Today was my hopefully last workout doing pauses and tempos. And I was like, literally fuck this. <laughs> God, that's so boring. Um, strong, but so. <laughs> I, I am going to be adding in a CrossFit style back in over the colder months, probably aim for once a week at this, uh, gym that has, uh, 
you can bring your kiddos as long as they keep themselves entertained. So we'll be relying on um, the iPad babysitter, which is fine. We do it at home too. Um, so yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be good, especially, um, when you, when you also work for yourself, um, there's not a ton of like socially interactions that aren't client centered. Um, so it's nice to go out and do things like a group fitness class. Um, even if it's just to like keep things spicy, like honestly, I don't even care what the workouts are at this point. Cause I'm not doing anything super specific. I'm just like, Hey, there's a coach. Tell me what to do. I That's will I do feel it. about yoga. I'm complete shit at yoga. Um, so I will never walk into those being like, I can't wait to stand on my head for four hours. Like I just go to yoga to go to yoga and there's people upside down and backwards and all the things. And I'm like, I love that for you. I love that yoga is a goal for you. For me, it's just like, go do something other than being in the yeah. gym with your headphones and not talking to anyone <laughs> every single day. Um, nutrition wise, what am I up to? Nothing crazy right now. I track every once in a while. I'm in a very loose calorie deficit still, which is why I don't really need to like phase out of it because I know that it's not super strict. It's not super low. I track every, when I feel like I'm like, well, what am I up to with my nutrition? I'll throw everything into my fitness pal just to make sure I'm getting what I need. But at the same time, I deal with people's macros and nutrition every single day so I can mentally count my macros myself and know where I'm at. Um, not really interested. I know the winter is always like bulking season for more of the bodybuilding world or people looking to change their body composition. I'm not really interested in that um, but with holidays all the holidays coming up i know my nutrition will be a little less structured and that will give me the diet breaks and the the extra food i need to make sure my strength isn't down the hole all winter yeah uh nutrition wise for me i'm just focusing on getting um enough protein to support um my body's demands and repair obviously there's a lot of stuff going on with this forum thing and rebuilding strength and that. So I just need to make sure that I'm feeling satisfied and not hungry. Um, so no deficits happening over here. Um, one thing that we kind of changed my, um, my partner and I is that we found ourselves almost, almost every evening in the summer, just like cracking a beer and like enjoying it, which is totally fine being mindful about it. But it got to the point where we were like, maybe we should just like not drink during the week. Uh, so sometimes sometimes we still do because there's no like, we don't do like a hard line that we're not going to, but we just sort of decided that if we're going to have one in the middle of the week, we will share one, which totally takes out like a lot of unnecessary just, I don't know, it doesn't help with your sleep. And it's, you know, like, so, and I was trying to work on my sleep or sleep quality, I should say, just because we're still not having sleep quantity. So um, just trying to look at any little things that we can do to support that. And alcohol is a big one of those things. You might think that it puts you to sleep, but it really doesn't. It doesn't let your body go into a deeper sleep. Um, you'll be in that sort of higher stress um, mode. So, um, and just sort of paying attention to things like that, like, if I'm feeling like I need something other than water, I can have like a bubbly. Or um, I did try some of the, um, like the PM supplement that Jill's nutrition company put out. Mine doesn't have anything equivalent. And um, aside from the taste being, like it's okay. You either okay. love hibiscus or you don't love hibiscus. It's, it's fine, it's a, it's a supplement, but, um, yeah, doing that when I feel like I really need extra recovery or, you know, things like that. So, um, and know that like, it can be a nice time to you, you're like, I want to sit on my couch with like a, gra a glass of red wine and like, whatever. But I think it's important to keep all of those things at the forefront of being mindful. Like, am I just doing it for the sake of doing it? Or am I actually enjoying what I'm doing? Is it becoming a habit that is impacting other parts of my life in a negative way sleep being one of those things um 
we're not really the people to talk to you about alcohol addiction, but if it's affecting your sleep, um, it can be a really easy thing to stop doing to see if it's if it, that helps. Yeah, I had a client who was doing like a glass or two of wine every night just out of habit. And when she yeah. started to get into the gym more and like better her nutrition, she stopped and she was like, I have way more energy and I'm sleeping better and I'm feeling better. I think alcohol is one of those sneaky things. I've it also does shit for your recovery. So if I've, you're an athlete and or you're lifting heavy, you're runner, people like that, and you need your recovery, alcohol is working against you. Basically. I've probably said this before on the pod, and it's something that sits really heavy with me because I truly believe I could be alcohol sober. I do dabble in some weed semi-frequently. Um, I do think I could be alcohol free and it really wouldn't change my they life have some really great non-alcoholic choices whether you're doing like a sparkling water or whatever but even the ones that are like like non-alcoholic beer it's not just what you buy at like like it's not just like oduls anymore there's like actual craft non-alcoholic beer yeah and my, things like that and it actually tastes good so my thing with beer or my thing with alcohol that gets me and i don't know who said this but it really sits with me is alcohol is the only drug we have to justify not using and that's my yep. pet peeve of being a person who probably totally. could be sober and not really be bothered totally. it's that other people would be bothered why why aren't you drinking what do you mean you don't want to drink and why is that the thing we have to justify because nobody it? would nobody would ever question you if they were if you were like no i don't want a pot gummy or no or i don't I want like, i don't want like, to do heroin tonight nobody would be like why not <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why yeah. you don't want any meth. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it is a very, um, it's a weird part of our society. And, and I did see an interesting TikTok that was like, you can paint it with any brush you want. It's still technically poison. Yeah. Um, but well, we it's the justify. only thing that we seem to be very socially okay with if you're into it and very socially not okay with if you're not into it. And it can be a real, like, you know, I've been places where I've been like, no, like, I don't feel like drinking. And people are like, what are you pregnant? And it's like, there has to, you always, first have of to all, have what if I was? That. Second of all, what, like, it's none of your business, right? And like, it's just, it's a, oh, it, yeah, you're right. It gives me the ick, like the big ick. You too. always have to justify it. People can't just take no as an answer when it comes mm -hmm. to alcohol. And that's something I've dealt with since high school. I did the majority of my drinking in high school. My mother's aware of this. So she listens. She's not going to be shocked by this news. She's very aware of what I was up to in high school. But even in high school, I would drive so that I didn't have to drink. And I still do that. I will choose to drive somewhere because then people don't question it. And it annoys the shit out of me every time. But as soon as I'm like, oh, I'm not drinking. Why not? I'm driving. They're like, oh, okay. Like, why couldn't you just be like, okay, cool. As soon as I said, are yeah. you not? And I do have a really great group of friends. We went to a fire a couple of weeks ago. I was driving. But even before I said that, I walked in with a coffee in my hand instead of alcohol. And they instantly were like, oh, Jill, are you drinking tonight? And I was like, no. And they're like, cool. Can we get you something else? And I was like, these mm -hmm. are the right people. <laughs> it, it literally can be that easy. Um, and I feel like even if it was, you know what, it doesn't matter the reason why you're not drinking. There shouldn't be a question after, can I get you something to drink? It should be just like, no, nah, I'm good. Or you're, and you're like, okay, cool. Like the coolers over there or the fridge question. is over there. Yeah. Like the only there doesn't have to be. No, is can I get you something else? Water, pop, a bubbly. What? If you have non-alcoholic options, feel free. Yeah. If you don't have them, just be like, okay, cool. Like when I don't drink, I will bring my own things so that I and still have a drink in my hand type. Yeah, thing. it's a weird, there's a weird stigma. And I feel like, I feel like with the rise of this non-alcoholic option thing, we're going to see people. I know a lot of people stopped drinking during COVID because they felt like, it was either an excuse to drink or, and it can be related to a lot, a lot of health things. I know I have a relative who stopped drinking during COVID just because like they found that their migraines were just out of control mm -hmm. and alcohol can contribute to that. It's also, it could be the same as like, um, like what if it was like triggered by chocolate or what if it was triggered by some other sort of dietary thing? Nobody would ever question if it was a health thing, but because it's alcohol, it's weird. Um, 
yeah, basically what I'm doing, and I know we have to wrap it up because Jill has a client call coming up soon. Um, but um, basically my priorities right now are getting in pur purposeful movement, rebuilding strength, and focusing on just being really mindful with nutrition and um, how that supports my energy levels and also my sleep. Um, and I have been sleeping a little bit differently lately just because I haven't been bringing my phone to bed um, or I haven't been on my phone in bed. It still has to charge beside my bed, but um, I haven't been on it while I'm like trying to fall asleep because that two wrongs don't make a right. Um, but yeah, so just focusing on those aspects and and really just not caring about or trying not to care that I'm not fast on my bicycle right now. That's okay. Yeah. I also put in the hydro PM. Um, and I have, if you're like, what is this supplement? Um, I have an entire TikTok video breaking it down so you can go watch that. And then if you have any questions after you watch the video, leave a comment or shoot me a DM because I think I broke down every piece of that supplement. Um, but it has been a nice change. I appreciate any form of liquid supplement or any like powdered supplement for the water intake side of things too. Um, it's been helping me fall asleep a little bit easier. It's been helping me wake up a little bit earlier because I have shifted my workouts to getting them done in the morning. So having something that's having a supplement that's letting me feel a little bit more rested obviously makes mornings mm -hmm. a little bit more like get up and go. Um, so I'm glad you're enjoying it for the most part. There is there's two flavors. So maybe next time you try the other one. Also, if you're not using it every single night, it's going to last you a long time. I also half scoop it, so it's going to last me double the amount of time. And then it's nice because I don't have to worry about individually taking all my nighttime su supplements. It has everything I need in there. So other than workouts in the morning and a new supplement at night and a little creatine break, I think that's – and adding some yoga. That's my life. So a few shifts, but nothing that feels like – crazy and dramatic and overwhelming it's just tweaking plus then i can walk my dog in the afternoon and i don't have to do it when it's dark out at 4 30. <laughs> which yeah. is cool. i think i think we we talked before we wanted to come on and do this episode because a lot of people are in a season of routine change if your kids went back to school you're probably thinking about your routine and know that like it can look different um from summer from summer to fall i think it's probably a big change because we're used to being outside for more hours you feel like you have more energy in the evenings because it's light out for so long and this can be time when you feel like you want to hunker down um and it's okay if you lean into that a little bit but let's make sure that our non-negotiables are happening and that our non-negotiables are things that we can achieve right? I don't want to see any of your non-negotiables be like, I'm my non-negotiable is I go to the gym six days a week. No, that's not the non-negotiable. The, neg the non-negotiable is six days a week of purposeful movement. It has to be something that even if you're, you can't go to the gym for some reason, you can still make something happen. I just, a quick story. I have a client who was like, I'm going to work out when I go into the office three days a week. but things kept happening on her lunch break that she would end up being shorted because she got stuck on a call or she forgot her lunch one day. So she had to go buy food. And I was like, okay, food trumps gym. That's okay. Um, and she was like, do you think that you could add in some things that if I miss my workout, I can work out at home. And what would you suggest I get for home to be able to do that? And I was like, no problem. I was like, get a set of heavy dumbbells, a set of light dumbbells. And I will add in things that like, that if you happen to miss your half hour in the gym during the day, after your kid goes to bed, quick half hour, done. You did not miss your workout. Totally fine. And she's been doing that and like super successful at it. So your non-negotiable should be something that you can make happen no matter what. Like that's the non-negotiable part, negotiable part is it's flexible, but like not in a specific way. Does yeah, that make sense? If you're needing that routine change, routine change, that's cool. But I would encourage you to get on it now versus when we are, if you're in Canada versus when we're in the depths of winter, because we don't know, wait we till know, January. Start well, we now, know please. even 
in the next couple of months. We know it's going to be dark out at 4.30. We know energy is going to take a hit. Mood's going to take a hit. That seasonal depression might start to creep in. Build the habits you want now where you still mm -hmm. have some of that motivation instead of being like, oh, it's December. Guess I should change my entire routine yeah. now. Um, and if you need help doing so, of course, you always know where to find um, Jess and I, if you have questions about our routines, or you're curious about switches we're making, uh, feel free to let us know. Drop it in the question box. If you see one of us post it, um, drop it in the comments, send us a voicemail, leave a comment on YouTube. You know the drill, all the options to ask the questions you want answered. As always, if you need to find me, you can do so on TikTok and Instagram at coachjill.april. And if you are looking for me um, at JLAC Fitness on all the socials. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.